Chairman, I'm very honored to give the official report of the health of our party. I've been through all of our medical records, and everybody here is a very healthy citizen. I'm proud to know. And specifically, I'd like to mention that I thank you for your prayers, and I am celebrating the health of my wife, who has joined me here as well. July 4, 1776, the founders of our nation posted their convictions on lampposts in words that reflected truth. But it wasn't the words that inspired what was then a minority to encourage the silent majority to eventually stand for the promises of a nation to bring about independence and inspire subsequent generations to protect the promise of America. It was that they acted upon those words and it was conviction of heart and deed that provided that inspiration. There are times in a person's life and times in the life of a people that test your soul. And some may see that as the happen occurrence of circumstance, but it truly is the march of truth, and it is how we respond to that truth that will define us as individuals and state who we are as a people. In July of 1776, our nation faced such a time. In the 1850s of the bloody days of Kansas, our state faced such a time. I have in my home, a painting that was painted for me by my sister-in-law and given to me when I was inaugurated Attorney General. It depicts our state. It shows the confluence of the Missouri and the Kaw. It shows the Native Americans, and it also shows the expansion of America. But the most significant image in that painting is an African-American former slave who has his hands in the dirt of Kansas breaking the bonds of slavery. And many of you may not know that our nation inspired the abolition of slavery. And people bled on our soil in that commitment. And at that time there were many who said, now is not the time. Now is not the time to speak. We must remain silent. We must, as there is that muddled definition of leadership, engage in self-preservation, preservation of title, cultural esteem, rather than fighting for truth. But there were those who would not listen because they know the conviction of their heart and they know there's no greater gift granted to us but that we have the authority to stand in truth for what we know is right and they stood. And they still inspire the nation and they, they absolve slavery from, from the borders of this nation. That after, and this is what many Kansans are not taught, after the end of the Civil War, those freed slaves walked hundreds and thousands of miles, many without shoes. So they could touch, they called themselves the Exodusters after the book of Exodus, so they could touch the soil of Kansas, the place where people bled to bring forth a new hope. And now people come to our state for a very different reason. It's not because we have lax laws. It's not because our legislature has failed to recognize the foundational promise of America that we must honor every single human life with just and righteous laws that shall be enforced. It is because there are those who have the authority and duty to do so who have chosen the muddled definition of leadership of self-preservation and chosen to look the other way in the face of obvious evidence of criminality. I am sorry I cannot unite my oath of office to enforce the law with those who desire to ignore the law and not act upon the law. My campaign is not about unity except for this. It is about the unity of truth that can inspire the hearts of a great people and a great nation to rise up again. You know my record. I've overseen over 60 homicide prosecutions. I've personally prosecuted murder and convicted them. My office, the conviction rate is up over 70% this year. I've managed the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, the AG's office. I have a record that will never be reported to you by the Kansas City Star. Because they are in league with those who oppose us. But you know the truth.
And now, my opponent who claims not to be political is asking you to do the most political thing imaginable. Toss away the gift of the truth on your heart and the gift of the right to vote and express that truth in the ballot box for a political calculation. And I have faith that you will not do so. I invite you into the storm because the light of truth can defeat the darkness and I still remain faithful to the people of Kansas and our common cause. Thank you. Thank you so Well, somebody had to follow that, and I didn't want to. So I asked our state chairman, uh, Chris Kopak, if he might say a few words to us regarding the state of the state party. Thank you very much.